Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Andy Arnott with Amy Wees. And this is Seller Roundtable number 79. And we are super excited to have Cindy Thomason back. Round two, fight. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on today, Cindy. And you probably don't recognize that because you're not a uh, not a boy who grew up playing Street Fighter, which you probably don't you probably don't even know what that is. No, you're not talking <laughs> my language. I did get the kryptonite though. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. At least one of them. It's you, you know when you're getting old. Like the other day, I was I was driving through uh, Dutch Brothers to to get a coffee, and uh, I was uh, I I I think I did like a like a. Um, uh, was it Austin Powers? I don't know. Some quote, you know, from movies, you know, when I was in my twenties, probably and the, and the dude looked at me like I was insane. So I was like, okay, now it's, <laughs> I've gotten to the point where I'm old enough now where I can't quote movies because most of the people I'm dealing with out in the world probably won't uh, recognize them. So, well, and a lot of them now are only watching YouTube, right? So like the the, there's not a lot of like movie watchers anymore and stuff like that. So it's crazy. We've been trying during uh, the pandemic lockdown during quarantine, we've been trying to watch all these awesome classic movies with our kids. We've been watching E.T. and Forrest Gump and like all those movies. Uh, Goonies, just, like, make sure you make sure you get Goonies and <laughs> Ghostbusters. Those are classics. That's perfect for Halloween too. That's a good idea. We'll definitely uh, do Ghostbusters. That, yeah. yeah. Trying to keep my kids appreciating, you know, yep. regular TV like I grew up on, not just like YouTube that they think is is you know good quality yeah. <laughs> production. Yeah, well, well, well and, and even that's long form compared now to TikTok. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. For fifteen seconds, you're entertained. You know, it's like okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that, you know that's interesting. Start to go off, off on a tangent here, but that that uh, QB 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 whatever that service that just came out. Uh, Meg Whitman from eBay and somebody, it was like a $6 billion launch, I think, or something like that. it was an insane amount of money that they threw at this thing and it failed miserably. Um, and it was supposed to be like short form, like 10 minute uh, videos, which in this day and age, you think would have, you know, gotten popularity, but uh, you know, pe people have YouTube, but you know, they're not going to pay for something they can get for free. So I think that's where they, they kind of miss, uh, <laughs> miscalled that, uh, that need there. Well, in 10 minutes is a long time, you know? I know when we did our website a few years ago, they were saying about three minutes. Now we're redoing it and they say 45 seconds. I'm like, I'm pretty soon yep. we're gonna get one word in. Yep. Then, you know? Yeah, That's yeah. when you have to hire the TikTok influencer to do your website. There you go, exactly. <laughs> They're masters at keeping their attention for 15 seconds. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you have to get creative with the uh, attention getting stuff. All right, enough of enough of uh, of going off on a tangent. I'm good at that. Sorry, I, I always uh, lead us down the rabbit hole there. Uh, but uh, Cindy, for those of uh, you who have, or for for those of the audience who have not uh, heard your first episode, and if you haven't, haven't, highly suggest you go back and and listen to it. But if if they haven't, uh, give us a little back background on uh, you know where you are, you know any kind of past you want to tell us about uh, jobs, college, kind of where you ended up, uh, you know where you are today. Okay, so um, well, I'm I'm in Northwest Arkansas, so uh, we're having cool, cold, uh, cold, rainy weather now. Um, I run a remote bookkeeping firm called Books Keep. We've been around for six years. We celebrated last week our sixth birthday. Um, we were created kind of out of necessity. I had um, a daughter that needed some. Uh, um, special tutoring because she's dyslexic and so I was needing to run her around about a two hour drive to where her tutor was and it was expensive so I created a bookkeeping service and after meeting Mike Michalowicz uh, in 2014 I realized that if I wanted to keep my clients um, able to pay me I needed to concentrate on more than just getting them good numbers I needed to, to help them with their cash flow because every one of my clients was struggling and through the coaching that I did with Mike, um, he helped me uh, refine my services down to a niche. And so in 2015, I started working with e-commerce sellers exclusively for a couple of reasons. One, I had several clients that were in that space that um, 
and they were talking about me a lot. And so, you know, we're all connected through Facebook and they would say something about my ability to help and, and that word just spread. So that was nice. But even more importantly, it was um, the folks in the e-commerce space were kind of looking for the same kinds of things I was looking for. I needed flexibility. I wanted to be able to work from wherever. I didn't want an office to go to. I, I wanted to be a little bit of a nomad in, in Arkansas anyway. And so our alignment for how we wanted to work and what was going on with our clients really kind of uh, worked well. They were also really good with technology, so it made it easy for us to serve them. Um, so it just, uh, it developed from there uh, into where I started focusing on the profit first from Mike Michalowicz's uh, original book and developing those concepts specifically for my e-commerce clients. Because I kept hearing over and over again that people were struggling with how to do inventory. And there were just pieces of it that just didn't work for, for my e-commerce clients. Mike was uh, revising Profit First because Penguin House was going to publish it. And I kept going after him saying, you've got to include inventory. You need to include inventory. And he finally came back to me and he said, it's not flying with Penguin House. You need to write the book. And so as a result, um, I came out with uh, Profit First for e-commerce sellers two years ago and um, have been um, really trying to, to get that in the hands of as many people as possible. Because if they can start off with the idea that profit is a habit, it's not some event that we do at tax time, that they're going to be better off in the long run and make better decisions for their business. Yeah, absolutely. MikeMotorbike.com, guys, if you want to go learn about Mike Michalowicz. And uh, yeah, so Cindy's uh, book is an offshoot of Profit First, which is by Mike Michalowicz, and she's niched down to e-commerce and specifically Amazon. So, I mean, really great stuff in terms of, you know, you know what they say, the one thing, right? The book, the one thing is, you know, you got to really focus. And that's something that I, you know, finally learned at, at, at my ripe old age of 43, or I'm almost 43. I don't know. I always have to ask my wife. I forget after 40, who cares? Right. Um, but you know, one of the things that, you know, that, that I realized with myself is just going too wide. And, and so, you know, if you're going to read just a few books, you know, definitely, you know, Mike McCallowitz's stuff is great. You know, we've talked, we talk about it all the time he's been on, um, you know, he's awesome, uh, huge fan. Um, and I, I know Cindy's the same way. Kind of once you once you get into Mike's world, it's hard to get get out of it. You know, just because you can tell he's genuinely genuinely there to help people. Um, and then um, you know we we've talked about his books over and over again. But uh, you know, definitely start start with 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 those books and then go from there. Um, Cindy. As somebody just starting out, besides reading the books and getting the material, I am infamous about, you know, just consuming tons of information and then not putting it, putting it into practice. So for someone like me who, you know, has all the knowledge, but it's just, you know, I whenever I start digging into this stuff, um, you know, I finally found a bank that's going to split my accounts for me, which was a, a chore in itself, believe it or not. Um, you know, you know, what's next? Uh, what should I really be looking at next in terms of, you know, getting my, my house in order in terms of finances and, and using the profit first formula? From a, a profit first perspective, um, getting those bank accounts set up. And like you say, that's sometimes the hardest thing, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, a referral that um, hopefully will make it really easy, easy. And this is not, I don't get paid to do this, I just like the service a lot. It's it's Relay, um, Relay Bank. Um, the website is RelayFI.com. And they really make it so easy. It's totally online. There's no service charge for their services. They make bill pay easy. They make getting uh, debit cards easy. Everything is done online. And uh, once we started using them for our business, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so, it, it, it's just uh, one of my clients said it's, it's um, uh, banking 2.0. It's just, they brought the whole experience into today's computer world and make it, they make it so much easier. So getting those accounts set up is the first thing. And then just start. I mean, um, for um, e-commerce clients, you know that inventory is like the most important thing you have to take care of. So get an account for inventory, keep your operating expenses separate, and get an account for profit. If you do just those three accounts to get started, you're going to be so much further ahead of the game. 
because the inventory cash flow is on a whole different cycle than your operating expenses cash flow. So keeping those two things separate will help you identify how your inventory account is growing to be able to buy more product and your operating expenses, you wanna just keep continual pressure on to, to reduce and not let that get out of hand. When those two things are combined, uh, those accounts, you, you look at it and Parkinson's law, which we talk about in the book takes over. You look at, you look at this account and there's a whole lot of money in there because you're going to buy inventory next month. But what you're thinking is there's a whole lot of money in there and your mind starts to work on, okay, I might be able to use this to go on and buy that computer. Or maybe now is the time to get that, you know, um, new thing for the warehouse or whatever separating those two things out is going to give you so much clarity and we're always focused on taking profit so whatever how you split that money you want to put one percent of what you you earn in profit as the place to start now i know businesses are doing way better than that but what happens with clients that are where we don't actually do an analysis and come up with a framework they just start moving money around and then um, they have a bill and they move it back and they never actually get into the rhythm of making, letting profit first really work. So we want them to, uh, we want you to start slow with some baby steps and get the system working and then you can refine it, in, increase that profit percentage. But it's a big shock to take your inventory out of and, your checking account. And maybe we can take a step back for those okay. people who haven't read Profit First and aren't sure what we're talking about in terms of bank accounts. I mean, we do have some folks that are probably just getting started and going, wait, I just barely opened a business bank account. And now you're telling me I need multiple accounts. How does all that work? So, I mean, can we, I guess the biggest thing that's important for people to understand is that you, when you get started, most of us have all of our money coming out of and going into one single account. Correct. And, you know, when I talk to consulting clients, many of them don't really know how much money is there, right? So what Cindy's talking about is actually taking you're creating several bank accounts so that when you get that check from Amazon, and let's say you sold 30 units that month, well, you're putting aside the money to buy the next 30 units of inventory into an account called inventory, instead of just putting it all into one I got money account <laughs> and then you run out of money and you're having to borrow again and again and again. And what I'm seeing happening with a lot of clients is they're having to dig into, you know, loans and stuff like that to turn over money because they're not realizing, whoa, I spent way too much on advertising or wow, I don't have enough margin in this product to buy more um, or to, to be making enough profit. So um, maybe Cindy, um, you can just um, take what I've said here and just kind of explain how sellers are struggling with that and what the multiple accounts do for you. Okay, for sure. The, um, I, I like to think about the uh, bank accounts, um, the one big bank account, as you described it, like a big pot of soup. If you've got a big pot of vegetable soup and you look at that pot of soup, you can't tell how many carrots are in there and you don't know how many potatoes or green beans or whatever. It's just all together. With the multiple bank accounts, what we're trying to do is kind of recreate that envelope system like our grandmother may have had, where she put the rent in one envelope and she put the grocery money in another envelope and maybe she had a money um, envelope for Christmas that was coming up. Um, we're using bank accounts in the same way. We're basically giving the money a purpose. We're saying this bank account is going to be for keeping up with how we do with inventory. This bank account is going to take care of growing our profits. And then the other one that I recommend people start with is the operating expense bank account. Now, as clients get more sophisticated, we, we like to add on a owner pay because we feel like business owners should be paying themselves. And of course, taxes, because 
you are going to be taxed. And so um, we like to add those additional accounts on. But for those people that are just getting started, if they will start with those three accounts, you'll get so much clarity. But the idea is bank accounts allow you to see the purpose for your money. Um, sales tax is another one that we, we recommend people start with right away. When it, you know, I know Amazon now is, is taking care of that, but if you're selling on Shopify or some other websites and you're getting those funds in, you're going to have to turn around and send that money out. And it's not really your money. You're just holding it um, kind of in trust until you pay it off, uh, pay it out to the government. So if that money is put in that one big bank account and you lose sight of I've got to pay sales tax and it may be $8,000. You don't want to have to be struggling with coming up with $8,000 to pay that. You just want to set it aside. It's really not your money anyway. So that's the idea behind it. Give, give your money a purpose and also um, by watching what happens in those accounts, you're able to see if you describe the situation of ability, if you're replenishing your inventory account based on what you sell, finish, then you, you've got a profitability issue and you need to dig into that. So having those things separated out so that you can clearly see intended for that money and how it's growing to be available to buy more um, inventory down the road and is needs to, those kinds of things you're able to get just from your business um, banking dashboard. Um, when running system to, to learn all of that, you can just go online and get the, get the information. Yeah. Awesome. That was a, that was a great, uh, kind of overview. And, um, so a quick question, uh, Cindy, this is, this is a, uh, selfish one on, on relay. Um, do they let, let you have, um, like as many checking accounts as you want, or what's the setup for, for relay in terms of, uh, fees and setup and all that kind of good stuff. Cause I wish I would have, I just went through so much trouble. Like I said, trying to find a, a bank account that would do this locally. And I don't really care about a remote bank. Um, I know that there's a limit. I have not hit a limit and <laughs> I've got many accounts. Um, so I, I use some of the premium services, like they've got some online bill payment services that they charge for. Um, they do charge for, but for just business banking, there are no fees. Awesome. Cool. Um, let's see here. Um, so one of the biggest roadblocks um, for Amazon is, uh, for Amazon sellers or just e-commerce sellers in general, is once they start scaling, right? They when they squ sc start scaling, they go, okay, well now what do I do? Do I, you know, put more money into my inventory? Do I market more? I mean, like where do I where do I put my money? And how does the profit first system kind of help people see, you know, what to do next in terms of um, of where to where to dedicate the finances? Well, as the money starts coming in and you're setting aside your replenishment cost and then you're putting money into your operating expenses, you really want to watch what's going on with that operating expense account because it can get out of and so you don't want just that just to be growing. One of the things that happens um, uh, that we talk about what those benchmark percentages ought to be for your business. So if you're to the point where you've got things dialed in with those three accounts, <clears throat> the other accounts, and you're ready to get serious about doing a profit assessment, and <clears throat> um, let's see if that helps. Um, you want to be. Um, you want to do a profit assessment to really understand the um, of your business, so that you're you're working towards those benchmark percentages that are outlined. Scale what you want 
to do is ensure that that doesn't just um, start to build and then get used for things that are not important to how the business grows and scales. So for example, um, you're, you're funding your inventory account at that replenishment level, but you want to grow by the inventory. Take your re replenishment amount, but then, then increase it 10% or 30% or whatever you think is one way we look at it. <clears throat> the other way we look at it is um, as you get more sophisticated with multiple accounts. Cindy, like can we pause and maybe have you um, dial in? Yeah, well, so I, I, I sort of, sorry, I went off on a tangent when you're talking about this, because this is the other really important thing that, uh, you know, you know how my brain does that, right? Um, but uh, something to really think about, and this is the, this is the big issue with Amazon, right? Is everybody's looking at their, their top dollar sale, right? Their, their, their sales, their revenue, right? They're not looking at their, their net profit. So what people, when they look at that number, they're not seeing that, you know, take, you know, 30% off the top for fees, take another, you know, 15% off for advertising, you know, uh, shipping, all this stuff that, you know, that that top dollar amount just does not, uh, you know, does not give you the full story by any means. And so once you actually start uh, digging into, you know, where your money's actually going, I mean, some of the, the people who are like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm selling 10 figures. It's like, oh, but how much of that is your profit, right? So, um, and it's easy to fall into that trap. I mean, you know, uh, I've definitely gone up and down throughout the years, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. And uh, generally, the down years are the years where I'm not paying attention to my numbers. So you guys really, really have to, um, you know, make sure that you're paying attention to your numbers. I think that, you know, you know, I get all the time when I, it's so funny, whenever I ride with, with Uber drivers, they always ask me, you know, in conversation what I do and, and they're just so excited to hear about the Amazon opportunity. Um, you know, but it's always, I always like, well, you know, I'm like, whoa, 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 you know, hold on, you know, go and listen to rich dad, poor dad, you know, do all this stuff first, because, you know, we've said this a million times, but you have to look at this as, um, uh, a, um, a, a business and uh, you know, you have to look at it as having a foundational um, you know, having the foundation of business before you try to get into Amazon and do all this, you know, all this other stuff that's, you know, really secondary after the fact of learning how to run a business. I think as well, you know, when you start running those numbers, we just had a meeting with our accountant last week and we <laughs> were paying more in taxes this year and we just invested a whole bunch of new products in inventory. So our ending number was actually negative. And we were like, oh my gosh, where did that go? You know, where did that money go? And when you don't think about, okay, well, where have I spent extra money? So looking at our PL, our profit and loss statement, we looked and shipping was a huge amount, a huge percentage of what we spent money on, right? And um, looking at that and thinking, okay, wow, shipping costs went up, right? And one of our products was quite large for, and we had to actually shrink it down and make it smaller and make shipping costs, um, lessen those shipping costs. So we know that that number is going to improve. And we know that a lot of our profit was reinvested into launching our four new lines of products that we're launching this year. But it was scary to be, you know, to have that number look amazing last year at the end of the year and then pay five figures in taxes. No fun. I'm sure Andy pays more in taxes than I do. But, um, but you know, this year to see that and know, you know, having an account that can show you, okay, this is the percentage of your total expenses that you paid on shipping. And this is the percentage that you paid on new inventory. And this is, you know, so just kind of getting an understanding of where your money is going, like Andy was saying, instead of just like looking at your, your sales going, oh, I sold seven figures. Well, that has nothing to do with whether or not, you know, your P&L is negative at the end of the year or how it looks overall and whether you know if you look at Amazon's financials we studied Amazon's financials during my MBA program and they have actually been in the negative for a long time because they constantly reinvest their shareholders are happy they constantly reinvest in new opportunities so they are look they're investing in the future and you know they're not as focused on that immediate um, profitability so you know I know my per unit profits are great 
But when I look at my overall P&L statement, I still have to look at that and go, okay, what's going on with that shipping number? How can I bring that down? And, you know, and all of that. So it's, it's so, so, so important to, to have an accountant, to understand your net profit number, understand how you can, the things that you can control to improve that. So, so important. And then also understand that when you're scaling, you're going to have, you're, you're, there's times you're going to have some negatives and you're going to have to keep working on that, but look at where you're going and what that money that you're investing now is going to be worth later, you know, when that inventory sells and it's not tied up in, in inventory. Thanks for tuning in to part one of this episode. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.